Okay. Tell us right. your name and what your science project was about this year. I'm Hannah Lankhammer Smith. I'm in seventh grade at Trexler Middle School. And this year I did Seeing Beyond the Visible, Photography with Near Infrared Light. Okay, what's infrared light? So infrared light, um, I have the electromagnetic spectrum here, if you see that. It's basically just wavelengths made of like gamma rays, um, x-rays, infrared, and radio waves. Um, a small part of that, that little section right there is visible light. So that's just like the average colors that we see in our lives, like blues, greens, reds, everything else. Um, so can we see infrared light? Infrared light, okay, so beyond all the visible colors is infrared light. And this right here, all these photographs are what we call near infrared light. Now infrared light, the actual spectrum itself, humans cannot see that. It's split into different parts, near infrared light, mid infrared, infrared light, and far infrared light. So how did you take pictures of infrared light? So normally we can't see any of those different colors of infrared light, but with my camera here, I have this lens that I stick on the camera like that, and it blocks out all the rest of the visible light, allowing only near infrared light to get in. Okay. So then... So that's how you got all of those pictures on there. Mm -hmm. All right. So tell us about your experiment. What did you actually do? Okay. So... Uh, all right. Um, so what I did for my experiment is over here, I have my light bulb, my lamp that, okay. So one of, what I actually wanted to do was take different objects such as leaves, um, different, uh, let's see, I have apples, leaves, flowers, just ordinary objects to see if the brightness would be different for infrared light and for visible light. So I measured that using the different bulbs here. I have fluorescent, incandescent, halogen, LED, and the bug light. And I stuck each of the objects under all of the lights here. And I took pictures of each one in visible light and infrared light. And then I stuck it on the computer and in Photoshop, I was able to look at the histogram for each of the objects and it would show the the average brightness for each of them in visible light and infrared light now i i have to i converted all the images to grayscale in order to make them all equal so they wouldn't have like red and mm -hmm. then green and okay so what were your results my results. I see you your could, data here. Yeah, the, that's that's just the straight numbers. The so average the number brightness is there. the average brightness of. So I see you have light, type of light, and then the object, and then the infrared light, average brightness, and that's what you got from the histogram. Right. And mm -hmm. the visible light brightness. So that's all your data. And all your lights. Okay. And then your results. So explain your results a little bit. So basically what I did is I analyzed it in a couple of different ways. I found the average brightness for each type of light for infrared and visible, the average brightness for each light source. So all the different light bulbs that I used and basically just took different averages like that and ranges and analyzed it to see if there were any differences or um, similarities to each of the brightnesses for hmm. the objects. And what I found was one of the main differences was that infrared had a very, it was drastically different from visible because none of the infrared readings got, they never got above 100, whereas the visible light readings never got below 100. So that was something interesting. Some other, let's see, some other observations. Mm, th another thing I noticed was the fluorescent bulb here produced a lot of visible light, but hardly any infrared light. So that that shows that many of the objects reflected a lot of infrared light under that certain light bulb. Let's see, another thing I noticed, um, the bowl of water steadily showed um, a high reading for both 
both both infrared and visible light. And I'm not quite sure if that was because of the white paper underneath that the white paper is naturally very bright, so it had a very high brightness to it, mm. or that the water is actually f reflecting a lot of mm. infrared or visible. So in conclusion, was your hypothesis correct? Yeah, my hypothesis was pretty broad. It was just saying if I photograph um, infrared and visible, I'll see differences. And yes, I did see lots of differences between both of the readings. Yeah. Nice. So you had your science fair. How did you do? Well, I got first place, so. Oh, very I... good. Congratulations. Thank you.